So then, hello everybody and welcome to another video. You don't join me in the Type R today, you actually join me in the daily. Which, for all you guys know, if you have been a watcher of the channel for quite a bit now, my daily is a 2.2 diesel 8th gen Civic, the same colour and everything as the Type R. That has actually been gone for, what, it must be half a year now actually. Obviously Baby Max had come along, we wanted something a bit bigger, something that we could put more stuff in, more space uh, for him, something a bit more permanent as a family car. So, oh the diesel was like coming up with like fault after fault after, it was just, it was, it was dying a slow and, and painful death. So, we got rid. <laughs> but this is the new daily, the new dad wagon. And without further ado, I can reveal So you the Nissan Quish Quish. So then this is it, we are in the Nissan cash monies and um, yeah, it's it's nice, it's a nice upgrade. Uh, it's not as fast as the diesel, that is granted because this is the 1.6 petrol, which I wanted to go away from diesel just because I don't particularly enjoy them. Not that I enjoy the lack of power that this has, but with it being such a small petrol engine, it's economically roughly the same. Plus, with fuel prices at the minute as well, I'd rather be putting cheaper petrol in than the, than diesel, to be fair. But either way, it, it, it does the job. The engine moves the car. That's all I need with this. So instead of me just chatting more rubbish sat here yet, um, let's have a look, quick look round at the features that the car has. There we go. Now, because we went for the Entec model, there's things that come with this as standard, such as these 18 inch lovely alloy wheels as standard. Purple paint, which I promise does look purple in, uh, in the sun, not brown, which is a nice little nod to midnight purple. So it's practically a skyline that I have right here. It also comes with, it's a facelift model, so we get the more aggressive looking front end with the nice projector lenses and the deeper haunches on the, the bonnet as well, which is, a he this bonnet is heavy. That, that's one thing I've realized with this car, the bonnet is so heavy. Roof bars are standard, which I do have a set of roof rack bars and, and, and bike rack bars rack. Uh, I can put bikes on it. Folding mirrors. Yeah! Full sat nav system which does work but it is like a decade old so it's not up to date on like speed limits but it does notify you when the cameras are and uh, what the speed limits will be for those cameras that kind of thing. Obviously speeds might have changed since then so it's not gospel. Hands free for your phone which is on the steering wheel. Full on display unit in the centre there you can see how many miles it's done now. That's all because I've just got the ignition on not because there's anything wrong with the car. Let me turn that off. That's scary. Cruise control and speed limit control for some reason. I don't know why you'd need to use that. Which the pedal has a weird thing where you press the accelerator to where it stops and then that's and then obviously the speed limit will stay there and then you push past a little stop there. See that click? And that may, lets you speed over it then. Which God knows why that's a feature. Cubbies everywhere, you've got that. Excuse all my McDonald's sugars that are going in there. Cup holders, you've got another bit here that you can put even more in, like a big flask, USB and, and jack plug in there. And I'm gonna remove that locking wheel nut because you can see exactly where it is. This is pretty cool. You can extend that for long journeys to a nice armrest. Traction control turning off button which I don't know why you need to do that in a front wheel drive pretend off-roader that's only got seven horsepower reverse camera as well which is pretty cool an absolutely huge boot which I've put a liner in as well so we can wipe that down but oh there is normally a, a parcel shelf there but I took it out to put something in but yeah you can see the size completely tinted 
back window and side rear windows which is pretty cool but yeah other than that that's kind of the main features of it that i think make it a pretty cool daily a pretty cool family car now i know you're probably thinking like kind of questions such as why have you gone for this car what is it that's, that's made you specifically narrow it down to this because i'm not the kind of person that just get something on a whim um especially when it's something that's as big as this is a commitment um i don't go through cars like sunday dinners I, I don't find that kind of thing easy which some people do prefer to be like that so obviously with this being the daily and the car that francesca and max are primarily going to be passengers in and i have my car separate which is i'm very very privileged to have that to have a separate car that one i can like film content with for you guys and two have as like basically a toy that's what it is so this car was heavily influenced i wanted it to be more of what francesca wanted as well with a bit of my input just to make sure that we were happy with it basically now she really loves the look of the duke which we went to have a look at we looked at a few and the boot space, it, it's smaller than the Civic. To say it's a big crossover, I feel like, well, it's a, it's a little crossover, really. It's like a hatchback that's on stilts to me. An older family, maybe, and you don't need like a pram or a car seat and things like that. Yeah, but it weren't going to work for us. So then we were looking at stuff that were bigger uh, in a similar kind of price range. So when we're narrowing it down, it's either going to be a CRV, which I was excited about to be fair, or a cash guy. So we're looking between the two. The insides were similar in, in features, what you can get. The thing I wanted to do, I didn't want us to go with our budget, go for a car that's as new as possible that we can just afford, and it'd be a base model. I'd rather us get a, a car that's it's newer than the Civic that we had. It's about it's only a couple of years older, to be fair, but highest spec we can get. That's why we went with the Entech one because it comes with the features like reverse camera and nicer wheels uh, roof bars that kind of thing we also want it to be economical which sounds daft coming from somebody that enjoys driving cars but i enjoy driving that car so oh, like i said i wanted to stay with petrol crv petrol wise all we could find were two liters so you can really get which i've already got a two liter honda that's sat on my drive don't need another one that's going to be drinking like an animal uh, and the cash guy came with a 1.6 so that ended up being the option we went for with it being the facelift as well we like the f I, I don't like the look of the pre uh, the the pre-facelift compared compared obviously i'm not saying it's an ugly car but the facelift of these looks like a next generation car to me so yeah that's how we narrowed it down to this had a few problems when we first got it the sales guy kind of bragged that we're gonna get a full service i know what a full service looks like an oil change is not a full service so i went back for some more stuff and recently the front driver side caliper actually seized up it would give kicking out some rate heat so i didn't mess about just got one from euro car parts and me and my dad just fitted it i know that could have been a video opportunity we've done enough with the brakes on the type r and I, I needed this to be running which it was such bad luck because we actually went on holiday the week that that happened um so for jessica and max actually traveled with her family and i drove the type r we actually we, we went to center parks and i had to drive the type r full of luggage basically that was it nice drive but um it's not the family traveling situation that we planned but like i said that is now fixed and the car drives absolutely fine tracking were a bit off i got that done as well um that's about it so yeah what do you guys think tell me what you think about the nissan quiche lorraine I'm just going to flick between things for this car. <laughs> Do you think it was a stupid choice? I've already had people guessing on social media. So I've been putting clues for you guys on social media, like on the Facebook and Instagram, even on the YouTube uh, put as a post uh, on the channel. Trying to give you a little bit of a teaser on what it might be. A lot of you got it right. A lot of you was kind of giving me the impression that I shouldn't go to buy it when th th this is my car. Like, you're ripping me about my own car that I've already bought. Stop warning me off it. <laughs> I'm not planning on doing any like mods to it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I can do really. I don't want to put cheap and tacky stuff on this when I can just keep it nice and clean. I can keep them tons of scratches nice and clean. There's a lot of, of like swirl marks on this. A lot. So that could be something we can do video wise. See how good we can get the paint up. But other than that, I'll see you next time guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked the surprise. Something a bit different. Still Japanese. But it's not a Honda for a change. So yeah, please like and subscribe to the channel. 
if you do enjoy any of my videos or even if you've enjoyed this one and click the little bell button so it reminds you when a fresh video does come on obviously maintenance wise this will be a different car that we can do things on as well i know loads of people have cash cars loads of people um, and when i've done stuff like with my dad's car insignia loads of people have watched them videos as well so yes yeah, so it's nice to have something different under my belt so anyway until next time guys like i always say enjoy the rest of your day bye oh oh one minute i just thought of something I thought I had a purple one left. I didn't have a purple one left. So it's black. Which is fine, because it's subtle. You can't even see it. Well, you'd see it in the sun when the car's actually purple. Put it that way. <laughs> oh, another thing. I don't really give cars names. The Type R doesn't really have a name. This is big. It's purple. Like an eggplant or an aubergine. So this is Gene. He's called G. Panoramic sunroof!